Cockatoos belong to the family Cacatuidae, a word derived from Malay origins, meaning a raucous echo, and the sulphur-crested cockatoo is certainly a Cacatuidae. The cockatoo family has several genera. Cacatuae includes most of the pink and white cockatoos, whereas Calyptorhynchus is mostly the black cockatoos. So today we're looking at the sulphur-crested cockatoo. This is a flock cockatoo. It's done well in urban areas, and as you can see here, is found commonly sitting on power lines. Unfortunately, its strong bill, capable of chewing off a finger, is also very destructive to the plastic insulation of buildings and power lines. The most important thing about any cockatoo is the crest, and the sulphur crest has the most beautiful crest. These birds are seed eaters and are renowned for eating bulbous roots. They also eat eucalypt seed and chew on flowering blossoms. One of their delicacies is that of the moth larvae that are found in dead limbs of trees. As these larvae chew on the decaying wood inside the hollow log, so the cockatoo can feel the vibrations in their feet and know that this delicacy can be obtained by chewing on the wood as shown. Then, at other times, the cockatoos simply chew on the wood to keep their bill skills. Feeding on the ground is where most of the feeding happens. And though they are seed eaters, eating of roots to me is far more common for the native birds. Here at Wagga Wagga, you can see this flock of cockatoos. They're not just picking seed up off the ground, but actively digging into the dirt. You can find that there are dominant birds. They will come up to another bird and make it move, because they believe that what they are chewing on is far more tasty than what they can find. I'm uncertain as to the cause of the dominance in the cockatoos, I suspect it is more just a flock phenomena than a sex-related male dominance. Here, a sulphur-crested flies in. Notice the crest doesn't go up on landing, but when he hears another bird calling, just watch that crest. It's magnificent. Many of the cockatoos seem to eat more roots than seed. And the way these birds are feeding, it certainly illustrates this point. The naming of the white cockatoo, or sulphur crested cockatoo as we now call it, is interesting. It was initially called Psittacus gallerita, or the gallery parrot. In 1790, when Captain Philip came with the first fleet of white settlement to Australia, John White was the surgeon on board. He drew a painting of the sulphur crested cockatoo and he believed that it was the same bird that Latham had described a little earlier in the same year. But Latham's bird was from the Malaccas of Indonesia, a very similar bird that we now call the yellow-crested cockatoo. The Australian sulphur-crested cockatoo is slightly different in the colouring and the bill. Instead of Psittacus gallerita as described by Latham, the white cockatoos have been placed in their own genera, Cacatuae. So now, the binomial name for the sulphur-crested cockatoo is Cacatuae gallerita. An interesting observation on the sulphur-crested cockatoo was made by Elsie of the Kimberley. He noticed between the dry and the wet seasons, the bill of the cockatoo varied in shape. In the wet season, they would dig in the ground and the mandible would wear, becoming more like a shovel whereas in the dry season they would eat more grain and seed and the mandible was much sharper. Here in the long grass you can see the cockatoos chewing off the seed stalks and chewing not so much on the terminal green seed but on the stalk itself extracting the carbohydrates. 
With the sulfur crested cockatoo, there have been many subspecies classifications. All this has come about because of the differences between the northern bird and the east coast bird. The northern bird does not have the pale yellow wash over the ear coverts. Originally, the larger birds in Tasmania were thought to be different subspecies, but now we realise that size is perhaps not so critical. Fitzroy, a subspecies, as the name implies, was first described from the Kimberley, but it stretches across the Northern Territory towards Queensland. This bird has white ear coverts, not the yellow wash. In Tasmania, the sulphur-crested cockatoo is a bigger bird than on the mainland, but this does not warrant its own subspecies name. So now we have two subspecies, the Fitzroy and the nominate race. Canopy feeding by the cockatoos is extremely common, and anyone who grows almonds, macadamias, or even fruit trees will find that the cockatoos come in and feast on the produce. But I want to look at their native diet. Look at these sulphur cresteds on the blossom. With a strong beak they cut off the blossom. The dominant left foot holds it and then they lick the blossom. Not with a furry tongue like a lorikeet. Their tongue is smooth and very muscular. Yet despite this they can lick the nectar without chewing on the flower. Many cockatoos do chew the flower including the seed, but here they are eating just the nectar. This type of feeding is more familiar to us with the lorikeets, but here it demonstrates that it does happen with these larger birds. Watch this large sulphur crested cockatoo as it feeds on nectar. Firstly, with its bill, it cuts off a sprig of flower. Then, with its dominant left foot, holds the sprig and then it behaves just like a lorikeet, licking the nectar and pollen out of the flower. It then throws away the sprig of flowers onto the ground. So the cockatoos, like many of their other citizen relatives, the parrots, the rosellas, and especially the lorikeets, are nectivorous. The cockatoos have been used as pets for many years. The first cockatoo pets were those taken from the Moluccas. The sulphur crested cockatoo can live to a ripe old age and one has to be content to have this bird in a cage for a long time. They have very strong bills and have been known to cause partial amputations of fingers. But for those who have them as pets, I would strongly recommend you give them a very varied diet. Nesting takes place in a hollow limb in spring and summer. The nesting site is determined by the male, as for most Australian citizens. He will find a hollow log and scratch and nibble away and find how far the hollow extends. It's been reported that chicks have been found several metres beyond the opening of the hollow. The hollow is lined occasionally with strips of bark but most of it is just the chewed sawdust. Here are two cockatoos standing over the nest, keeping watch. 
The sulphur crested cockatoo is isomorphic, so I can't tell which is the male and the female. But for those of you who keep these birds as pets, be prepared to listen to a continuous, raucous call. In terms of predation, the reptiles coming up into the hollows are one threat, particularly pythons and goannas. Another threat to all birds are the Australian raptors, particularly the wedge-tailed eagle. But here above the nest, you can see the sulphur cresteds giving chase. That is the end of our video on the sulphur crested cockatoo. And on behalf of Plumes of Oz, we hope that you have enjoyed it and will subscribe to our channel, then YouTube will notify you of our next release.